For the first time in over 40 years, Congress is examining a U.S. president's authority to launch a nuclear attack. The Senate Foreign Relations Committee hearing is titled Authority to Order the Use of Nuclear Weapons. The panel's Republican chairman accused President Trump last month of setting the U.S. on a path to World War III. In August, Mr. Trump vowed to unleash fire and fury like the world has never seen on North Korea if it continued to expand its atomic weapons program. Trump and the Nuclear Codes Trump's Long-Standing Nuclear Fixation The last time Congress debated this issue was over a four-day hearing in March 1976. A Nervous Laugh Senator Chris Murphy, a Connecticut Democrat Explain the reason for Tuesday's public hearing. We are concerned that the president is so unstable, is so volatile, has a decision-making process that is so quixotic, that he might order a nuclear weapons strike that is wildly out of step with U.S. national security interests. Senators also wanted to know what would happen if the president ordered a nuclear strike. Robert Keller, an ex-commander of U.S. Strategic Command said that in his former role he would have followed the president's order to carry out the strike, if it were legal. Mr. Keller said if he were uncertain about its legality, he would consult with his own advisors. Under certain circumstances, he explained, I would have said, I'm not ready to proceed. One senator, Ron Johnson, a Republican from Wisconsin, asked, then what happens? Mr. Keller admitted, I don't know. People in the room laughed. But the BBC's Tara McKelvey, who attended the hearing, said it was a nervous laugh. What else can we expect from the hearing? No Trump administration officials are testifying before the hearing, which is examining the nuclear command and control structure that has served all U.S. presidents. Discussion about the highly classified process of actually launching an attack is unlikely in such a public forum. The hearing is being closely watched, not only due to the grave nature of the topic, but also because of Mr. Trump's vocal critics on the panel, some of whom come from the Republican president's own party. Bob Corker, the Tennessee senator who chairs the committee, last month engaged in a Twitter spat with Mr. Trump, likening the White House to an adult daycare center. Another senator on the panel has drafted legislation proposing to curb the president's power to launch a nuclear attack. The bill by Edward Markey, a Massachusetts Democrat, would require Mr. Trump to obtain a declaration of war from Congress before launching a nuclear first strike. Despite rallying 13 co-sponsors in the Senate, the measure has no Republican support and has gained little traction. Bob Corker says Trump utterly untruthful president. Can Trump launch a nuclear attack? As commander-in-chief, the president has the sole authority to order a nuclear attack, which can be delivered either by submarine, airplane, or intercontinental ballistic missile, ICBM, which make up the so-called nuclear triad. Under current rules, the U.S. president could set a strike in motion by entering the codes into a device called the football which travels everywhere with the president. Mr. Trump is not required to consult anyone or gain consensus from any other members of government. His top advisors, such as Defense Secretary James Mattis, Secretary of State Rex Tillerson, or National Security Advisor Lt. Gen. H. R. McMaster play no role in the chain of command. Congressional approval is required for the use of conventional military force but nuclear powers have remained within the president's authority since the dawn of the nuclear age. This is because an enemy ballistic missile launched from the other side of the world could hit the U.S. in barely 30 minutes, 